I woke up, took my pills, had a nice shower, that I just did, yes, <laughs> quickly slipped on my uniform, ate a tasty breakfast, grabbed my bag, and headed off, all as per my usual daily routine. It was only after arriving in class that the normality of the day was thrown off. After taking my seat, I watched my classmates trickle into the room over the next hour, until every empty seat was eventually taken harder than Hanako's. Oh, what happened though? Oh no, it's empty! <gasps> I can never get used to the idea that she just doesn't show up to class every now and again. It feels all the more worrying now as well, given that Didi left and the music stopped. Oh no! As Muto continues to drone on, I find my gaze flicking every so often over to her seat, as if she might appear there any moment now. Nobody else seems to care at all about her absence, but they have little reason to. Hanako being absent from class after all is perfectly normal, or at least it was. Her attendance hasn't been all that bad from what I've seen in my time here, but it was apparently much more sporty beforehand. Oh, okay, let me just take a good look at this image. Okay. I guess this is only over here, right? Yeah. Oh, oh. This is also an ominous time for her to be gone. It's the day before her birthday, and my suspicions are starting to rise after the breakdown she had in class when it was mentioned. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I, f I forgot that the birthday party wasn't celebrated on her birthday, right? So, yeah. An increasing amount of my thoughts is taken up by how I can help her. But in the end, I feel like I can't do anything. But you have to be there to support her, Hisao. You love her, right? So you have to be there for her. And I'll help you make the right decisions. <laughs> the bell heralding the beginning of lunchtime rings out, shaking me out of my thoughts. Her collective sigh of relief can be heard from the class, though Moto looks quite put off. He dislikes being interrupted in the middle of his exciting lectures, after all. Just when I'm wondering what I should do on lunch break, given that Hanako and Lydia aren't here, the solution presents itself. Well, you two again. Why do I? Why does it seem like I keep seeing this two so often in Hanako's food? <laughs> but anyway, afternoon, Hichan. Okay, afternoon, Misha. Shizune, you both look as bright as ever. Oh, what's going on? She just wants to know if you like to have lunch with us today. Hmm, sure. It would be good to have some company. Though I want to see Hanako, but anyway. The cafeteria hums with activity, much like my old school did. Yamako is different though, in how strangely civilized the lunchtime rush is. What one to, would expect to be an unruly mob chomping at their beat to get to the serving area is rather a neat and organized one. There's a small amount of jostling, and people's heads are often craning around to check on what's happening on the head, but it's pretty subdued. This is due, no doubt, to the very serious rules regarding such matters in this school. The same strict discipline is observed when students move in the hallways or come to and from their dormitories and the school gym. While the reasons for it may be slightly off-putting, I've come to quite like the this sense of order that's enforced in the school. I didn't really like being told by Shizune and Misha to get their lunches though. I feel a little used as I take a seat at this table where they are sitting, plunking their food down in front of them. Sweet bread and strawberry milk for Misha figures because her hair is pink so strawberry milk makes sense. <laughs> and maybe the sweet bread is pink in colour, I don't know. A bowl of ramen and juice for Shizune. Okay, that's rather simple enough. I heave a sigh of relief as I put it all down, after the significant difficulty I had carrying it all in addition to my own lunch. Thank you! Misha claps her hands together before popping over open the wrapper and digging into her bread ravenously. Shizune simply gives an appreciative nod before giving her steaming ramen a stir and blowing on it a little to cool it down. I open my own lunch, another packet of sweet bread, and take a bite before washing it down with some juice. The bread is very sweet, so much so that I end up forcing myself to stomach it just to get the experience over with. Yeah, I kind of get that. I mean, I do... I mean, like for example, oranges. Oranges tend to be kind of sweet also, and I usually don't really like that sweet taste of orange. Uh, but it takes some getting used to. Uh, 
yeah, but I still do eat oranges, they are nice, yes, just sometimes can't really take the sweetness. Anyway, through, I decide to take a break from the difficult task and ask what's on my mind. So, I'm guessing you two had a reason to drag me down here. You two seem to always have an ulterior motive after all, and does it have something to do with Hanako? Why are you fail, Ifan? The problem have a different affair with fear. Her mouth is full of sweet red as she speaks. It's a pretty unpleasant sight. Shizune looks a little crossed out before going back to eating her ramen. I wait until Misha swallows what she has in her mouth before speaking again. You're not buttering me up to make me work with you after school. Nope. Not trying to extract information from me that I might not want to give? Nah. <laughs> Fine, you win. I guess you just wanted to eat lunch with someone as intelligent and handsome as me then. Oh, <laughs> the soft wolves he saw. That's it, Hisan. You got it. She really looks unimpressed as Misha finishes signing our conversation. And sucks in the last of a long doodle as she signs her own thoughts. She she just says you shouldn't be suspicious of us. She's just doing her duty as a class representative after all. How is she uh are you doing that? As much as I hate to admit it, it looks as if I still have trouble communicating with Shizune. Yeah, it's a given, don't worry about it. And you need to master sign language if you're going to talk to a Shizune, which we're going to do in Shizune's room, yeah. It should be a simple matter of keeping eye contact with her and addressing Shizune instead of shying my speech. But when somebody else is doing the talking for her, it's a, uh, it's a surprisingly difficult task. It's the class representative's job to then show everybody's doing alright in class, isn't it? Not really. Wait, how is making me get your food and showing that I'll go well in class? She's in halves and adjusts her glasses disapprovingly. So this is the test you get for giving you companionship during lunchtime? That's a total dodge of the question. Uh, wait, hang on. Uh, what's, what's going on? How did you know that I... Mm -hmm. He is away, and Hanako is absent, and since those two are the only people you hang around with. <laughs> You're so making her obvious, you see. Ouch. I may well have done so, but she didn't need to wrap it in. Maybe this is payback for before. Uh, right, well, thanks. I appreciate it, and that isn't sarcasm. The two nod, and we get back to finishing our meals. It feels a little embarrassing to be accompanied just because they noticed I was lonely, but it isn't as if they're strangers either. It isn't long before I finish the last of my bread and start on the last of my juice, and as I do so, I find my, I find my mind wandering back to what I had been thinking about before the two interrupted my train of thought. It feels like I'm the only one in the class that so much as acknowledges Hanako not being there. It felt, like, it felt like this the other times she skipped class, but now it's even more acutely annoying. Yeah, you should go see her. He sounds like really. Does nobody care if she's happy or not? Have they just written off any possibility of helping to make her better? Even Muto doesn't try to keep her in class, and I'm still not wholly convinced by his reasoning. Hey, Chan, is your juice class is inspired here? Hmm? What? You're pulling over your face like this. As if it were needed, Mishan mimics my own expression. Her exaggeration makes me grimace, though she's only at least takes some amusement from me. I was just thinking about Hanako. Oh? Misha's interest is piqued, and so is she's nice, once my words are interpreted for her. I'm just worried about her being so absent so often, uh, especially now though, what with her birthday coming around. Mm, see, they know, yeah they know. The memories of the bad incident in class are still fresh in their minds. Their faces alone are telling that much. Do you know anything about Hanako? Anything that might help? Misha shrugs and looks to Shizune, who mouths on this for a while. Okay, Shizune knows something. The only people she's ever talked to for more than Sanderson or two are you and Lily. Mm, probably not. 
She's name may not be able to convey Lily's name in a derisive tone of speech, but I feel as if it comes true in her sign language. The effect is lost, however, after Misha's interpretation. Well, it makes sense. It's like translation, for example. Sometimes some things in the original language are lost in translation, right? Yeah, it's just things that can't be helped. That's why translation is not so easy, you know. <laughs> yeah, you have to write really understand the original meaning behind the original language, you know. There are a couple of things we know about Hanako as student council members. There's the records that pass from hands, but we can't say anything about what's in them. Understandable. It sounds a lot like the nurse patient confidentiality. Yeah, you know. Every time I find someone that knows something about Hanako's past, it turns up being a dead end. The only way I'll ever find out is by asking her. I don't know if she'll let me know such things. But if it's for her sake, I have to at least try. Well, she has really opened up to you and she has tried to tell you a lot of things, so I'm sure she will. It's just a matter of time, really. As long as you don't screw up. Okay. Don't worry about you, Hichan. It happens every year, no? Uh, that doesn't remove my sense of worry at all. I still feel a little at fault for what happened in class. But this feels like it goes further, even without their confirmation that fact. Misha notes my troubled expression, her own usually happy and reassuring face dropping. Everyone has problems they have to deal with, right, Yijan? Yeah, I just wish I couldn't help Hanako more with hers. With that, the conversation trails off on a depressing note. Eventually, Misha manages to pick the mood back up through her usual bright and bubbly antics, but my mind remains focused on Hanako. I'll go check on her later, yeah, you definitely should. Alright. I make sure my door is locked after dropping off my school bag, and I don't want to see Kenji here. <laughs> the dorms are quiet. Moto kept me occupied longer than I expected, discussing my studies after classes ended, and pressing on me some worksheets to give to Hanako almost as an afterthought. Absorbed in thought, I'm late in registering the shadow that appears in front of me. Looking up reveals the owner of said shadow oh no it's Kenji. <laughs> hey man, haven't seen you in a while. Oh hi. <laughs> What's with that is fun? My absent minded greeting visibly annoys him. I would probably have had the same reaction. Uh, sorry, just thinking about a lot of stuff. Thinking is a pretty poor excuse, not be eating the war effort. Oh man, you you and your wall. <laughs> and how goes the war? I am preparing. By now I need money to help with those preparations. If you want me to loan you money, just say. <laughs> no man, I'm good. Yeah, good. You don't want my money? <laughs> hey man, don't look so surprised. It's insulting, but you always tend to, you know, borrow money from me. I'm pretty big in the competitive voice, and I study up on some guys who didn't know that. What? Voting? <laughs> Pretty sure that bad thing will be against the school rules. <laughs> school rules don't matter. This is a war situation. People these days, they have no appreciation for what war means. So what do you need this money for at that I ask? non perishable can food, many materials, mostly corrugated iron wood pillows, sophisticated kit, camping heater, part of a radio, sleeping bag, flashlight, mechanical car, okay. This totally sounds like a survivor. <laughs> All the survival tools, oh, your military and all that. At first, it strikes me as a rather random assortment of objects and materials, but after a few seconds, it clicks. Isn't that a list of materials for for our shelter? Ah, so you've read of protect and survive for that. It's good to see someone so knowledgeable about how to protect themselves. You don't seriously think <laughs> it's a non-zero possibility? No, I'm pretty sure there's zero possibility of that ever happening. He slowly and dramatically raises an eyebrow. Well, as dramatically as one can raise an eyebrow. The chance is, I don't know, 0 0.1 to the trillionth place is infinitesimal. Oh, this is the first time I see this, so infinitesimal. Besides, where can you build a fall shelter anyway? <laughs> Certainly not on campus. 
It's my summer holiday project while I'm home. But that's I can do it. What? Really? Yeah. He thought you improved my crafting skills and mana dexterity. Or something. No, Kenji, his dad probably just thought it might keep him out of his hair for a while. <laughs> Still it does make me wonder what his parents are like. Maybe they're totally normal. Okay, Kenji is just an uh, aberration. On the other hand, maybe this kind of paranoia and fearful survivalism runs the family. Hey, wanna help me, Billy? You look like the type to be handy, tools. If I had your help, we could make a really badass spunker instead of just poor shelter. No thanks. <laughs> I doubt that. Playing soccer before my accident gave me good footwork, but I've never really tried my hand at anything approaching real handiwork. I'm not really. I'm busy over the holidays. Anyway, I'm fit. A shame. If the family members never get a hold of the launch codes, I feel fear that so few will be prepared. And your fallout shelter will protect you from a nuclear bomb explosion. In the case that does, this does happen. The fallout shelter is meant to protect against the blast. That's what a blast shelter is for. I thought you knew better. My mistake, sorry. My home is really far away from any major military site. So the fallout following your nuclear exchange is a bigger concern than the blast itself. What this do do is keep the dust and other part particulates away from me. My food supply my sleeping area. It's got then it's gotta last me at least 14 days though. 14 days is a pretty long time. It is! I need one little water there for drinking, too optimally, so that I can wash as well. Toiletries need enough. Just garbage bags and bin space outside the shelter area. Food maids can surprise, of course. <laughs> of course. And the radio is for outside communication. <laughs> right, right. So I can pick up gum alerts on what's going on outside. I need a mechanical clock rather than an electric one in case the electromagnetic impulse from a nuclear address fire price it too. <laughs> I don't even. <laughs> There's all the other stuff right there as well, like extra clothing, matches, and candles. I think we still have time to get it all though. Maybe. As much as I hate to say it, I'm a little impressed. He's really researched this and thought it true, but for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> then again, I don't know if I want to live in a post-apocalyptic world with only people like Kenji having survived. It sounds like you really know what you're doing. Is that right, I do? It must be hard, living in constant fear like this. He hardly ever socializes either. So the fact he went bowling with others in itself is something of a surprise. This mentality reminds me a little of a certain someone. Thankfully, her fear of others doesn't manifest in such a distinctly eccentric way. One thing I know for sure is that I certainly can't tell him exactly why I haven't been able, uh, why have I haven't been hanging around with him much recently. It's late. I have stuff to do. I'll think about making a fallout shelter or something though. Yeah, right. That's cool. A man has got to do what he's got to do after all. You should hang out with me sometime, by the way. You're a cool dude. Cool dude should hang out together, right? <laughs> For some reason, that compliment actually feels kinda nice. The situation with Hanako being what it is, though, means, I, means that I probably will be able to fulfill his request. For now, at least. Actually, never. <laughs> That'll be good. I'll talk to you later about it when I can. Cool. There, that dude. He retreats to his dormitory room. I had better go see Hanako. Yes, we, we've wasted too much time talking to Kenji. Let's go. Okay. I stand outside of the door to Hanako's room, hoping that she isn't in too much of a state, as I nervously clutch the worksheets Moto asked me to pass on to her. It's one more reason to visit her, and it gives me something to talk about. So I suppose I should be thankful to him for giving me the task. A long breath to steady myself, I wrap my knuckles on the door in front of me. Silence. I listen intently for any sound of shuffling coming from inside, but I can't hear a thing. Hmm? Don't tell me she's not inside. I knock on the day. I knock on the doors again, slightly harder. Where could she be? Still no answer. How strange. Scratching my head, I make one last attempt at getting her to answer as I knock on the door one final time. Hanako, it's just me. Muto said to give you some stuff. For a while, the attempt seems just as unsuccessful as the last. Just before I slip the sheets under her door, though, I hear the handle rattling. 
Okay, she's inside, right? As the door opens halfway, I quickly try to see how Hanako's faring. It's a task made somewhat more difficult by her oversized gown hiding so much of her body. She doesn't look sick, or at least not immediately so. To be honest, I would have preferred that to her expression right now. She looks terribly tired, and appears to be barely acknowledging my presence. Hi Hanako, uh, Muto wanted me to give you this since you were in class today. I hold out the loose sheets, which she tentatively takes in her hands. The way she moves is devoid of thought. Her posture is slumped, in an unusual manner for someone that's often so tense and worn up. Even her eyes keep looking away from mine, doing their best to avoid eye contact. I move my head a little to try and get a better look, but she just ends up turning away. Are you... okay? If you are feeling sick or anything, I could go get a nurse. It feels almost pitiful to put on such a routine, get well soon act. I can't think of anything else I could possibly do for her though. She seems to collect herself a little at the notion, but only a little. Her head remains turned away, but her eyes move towards me. I'm fine. An awkward silence follows. As it lingers, I notice that the sleeves and the cuffs of her gown bear slightly damp stains. Wait, stains? Wait, don't tell me... Okay, okay. Don't tell me st stains... Okay, anyway, her cheeks are a bit red too. Has she been crying? Okay, so, okay, so stains referring to the tears. I see. I hesitate a little before coming out with the words I really came here to say. Would you like me to stay? I don't have anything urgent to do at the moment, so it wouldn't be any trouble. Hmm, her eyes slide away from me, and I lose any hope for improvement of her mood. I wait for a response, but she doesn't say anything, nor give me any kind of gesture. She just stands there, looking away from me. Hanako? She, sh uh, she slowly shakes her head. Okay. No! With that, Hanako steps back and closes her door without a second word. More than a little worried, I retreat back to my room. Wandering up the hallway, I keep mulling over what happened. It felt like Hanako was only half there, as if I was interacting with a robot that was just doing what it was programmed to without any real thought. She was a half of a person. This is frustrating. I had hoped that meeting Hanako would help the situation, but I feel like it's only make it uh, it's only made it harder to understand her. How am I supposed to try and help her when she quite literally shuts me out like that? I don't even bother to turn on the light, opting instead to simply change into my pajamas, quickly choke down my evening pills, and collapse on the bed. On my bed rather. And we go on to the next day. Alright. That's pretty depressing. <laughs>